this You're is welcome. the fifth of our top tip videos and I thought we could cover some interesting scenarios that are important that we might uh, have some help to recognise please. So starting off, patient comes to us, they've had the cataract surgery and they've got complications. Tell us how we might manage post cataract problems that we see. Well, usually if they have complications we would have left some instructions or send a letter. However, sometimes the most important really scenario for us is infection post-operatively. Fortunately, it's very rare. In this area, it's one in a thousand, but it still happens and we need to deal with it within hours. Mm. So if somebody had cataract surgery, say yesterday mm. or in the last three days, mm. and they present to you with painful red eye with loss of vision, mm. send them straight away. Mm. Okay. Emergency, mm. weekend, night, anytime. And we have doctors to deal with them because they need mm. injection of antibiotics inside the eyeball. Uh, what about contact lens wearers? We see a lot of these problems. What is your top tips for us? Well, contact lens wearers, the first thing you advise them, take it off. And put an iPad with some antibiotics, send them to us. It could be as simple as an abrasion. Mm -hmm. Just a little scratch because they don't use it uh, appropriately. But it could be serious infection. Mm -hmm. With amoeba, acanth amoeba, which is very serious, we have to do special tests. Or it could be just uh, bacterial infections and then we need intensive antibiotics to treat these patients. So the first thing, stop mm. wearing the contact lens, give them simple antibiotics, chlorophenicol, and send them our direction and then we can differentiate the simple from the serious. So there's no place for GPs to I don't think so, I wouldn't. Okay. Thank you. How do we recognize adenovirus? Well adenoviral usually they come to you after uh, upper respiratory infection. They have a bit of red eye, intolerance to the light, photophobia, but the vision is okay. Uh, a bit of congestion again around when you examine as we uh, discussed in the tips for examination mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then you ask the patient, well, do you have any fever, do you have any, and they said, well, yes, I have malaise, a bit of tiredness, and then palpate the lymph nodes, preauricular, usually there is one in the side where the eye is uh, the trouble, the right or the left, and then you diagnose it simply putting a bit of fluorescein, have a look at the, uh, at the cornea with the, with the blue light and you will see little punctate staining. Mm -hmm. And then you think, ah oh, well, that's I think adenoviral. And it's not sticky, mm -hmm. it's just watery mm -hmm. and photophobic. So treatment, chloramphenicol, few times a day, four times a day, maybe for a week, just to prevent secondary infection. But there's no treatment usually for this. Okay. And, uh, Tell me a little bit about uh, retinal detachment, vitreous detachment. How do we recognize uh, retinal detachment? It's very difficult, but usually if it is a retinal hole, you know, floaters is quite common. 99% are vitreous detachment, which is innocent, doesn't cause any problems. It may follow a, a flashes of light. Flashes of light followed by floaters and the flashes stop no longer there. Usually the scenario is vitreous detachment, which means nothing to worry about. Most common in myopic people, short-sighted people. However, if it is the flashes continue, if the floaters are huge, if the floaters come as a sudden shower of black dots, and if it is associated with a gray, like curtain waving in front of the vision, then that's serious. That's a detachment. You have to suspect it really, have to use your judgment. In a younger person, sudden loss of vision, they are myopic mm -hmm. and they have flashes of light straight away to the hospital because we could save the eye by lasering it. And have you any top tips around temporal arteritis? Uh, well, temporal arteritis, if you suspect it, straight away to the hospital. You can start them on steroids, uh, systemic mm -hmm. steroids, mm -hmm. but you have to follow the pathway which we are working on it now mm -hmm. and I think it's in the final yes. stages. So we start steroids prior to Indeed. referral and probably yeah. sent to the rheumatologist in actual That's fact. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what about eye conditions that are associated with other systemic disease? Well, yes, of course, there are every single disease, I think, associated with eye manifestations. Ma namely here, the rheumatoid arthritis. Dry eyes, treated. Mm -hmm. If it is red eye, mm -hmm. painful, usually marginal keratitis, we need to see them because the treatment is very specific and you have to deal with them. Ankylosing spondylitis could be associated with uveitis. Again, we have to see them to initiate the treatment. And of course, all other diseases, I think they are associated with eye problems, diabetes, mm, yes. hypertension. Is it worth specifically mentioning MS for comment? Well, MS, they could be if it is young lady, for example, and they have washout of red colors associated with pain in moving the eye. This is usually retrobulbar neuritis. You can refer them either to us or to neurologists.
Thank you very much. You're welcome.